It's a celebration year in Amanus in the Western Cape at the South African National Space Agency where a state-of-the-art multi-million rand space weather station is being opened and officially launched today uh, by Minister Dr. Blade in Zimande. Uh, of course, the centre uh, took just over three years from sod turning uh, to the point where it's now being launched. And uh, joining me to talk about the significance of a centre of this kind is the acting CEO of the South African National Space Agency, and from Lisa, a very warm good day to you. Uh, so here we are standing in a brand new facility today, uh, a facility being launched by Dr. Nzimande. Let us start with what exactly a, a, a space where the station is uh, to the layman, what exactly happens at a facility like this? So this is a space weather center. Okay. So it's a space, space weather center. In this facility, what we aim to do uh, is to make sure that we monitor the activity that happens in the sun, so in the outer space, and how that activity influences especially the technology and the infrastructure that we have on the ground. So when we talk about um, this being a 24-hour centre, I know that there are some uh, delegates here from uh, across the continent as well as uh, uh, the United States, I understand. Uh, explain to us where South Africa then uh, finds itself in this uh, space weather monitoring uh, system and what role this will play uh, on the continent but also globally. So we've had the wonderful opportunity to see where we've taken the fundamental research that we've done over the years and take up the opportunity when the International Civil Aviation Authority, that is ICAO, put out a regulation that anything that flies must use space weather in it purely for the safety of life. For South Africa, we took our research and positioned ourselves to make sure that we're the regional space weather center in the continent. So the partners that you find that you're seeing here have walked the journey with us to make sure that we move from research to operations. In particular, with the African partners, they, are, they provide us the capability to put ground instruments because we look from space, but we also look from the ground to make sure that the data that we provide has been calibrated and it makes sense and is actually of high quality. So for this, you need collaborations and partnerships. But the most important thing that we're celebrating today is we've moved from research to operations, and not just operations, but 24-7 opera operations. And as the country and the world is moving Moving to the fourth industrial revolution, it means more and more as people we are dependent on technology. And technology can be impacted or disrupted by the activities that happens on the sun. So um, I think you did allude, uh, allude early on to, um, you know, solar weather. Um, and, and you're talking about the impact on our systems here, for example. Um, if a layman will ask, but what does weather in outer space um, have to do with with me driving my vehicle, for example, or me um, being able to use the internet, for example. Just explain that to us so that people at home understand um, why the monitoring of um, weather in space actually has um, an, an impact on our everyday lives as, as, as consumers, as workers, uh, as citizens. So, so one of the things that the sun does is to put out what we call the solar storms. Uh, it's a natural process that the sun goes through. It bursts out the solar storms. The electromagnetic activity that happens when those solar storms are based out actually interrupts and interferes with our technology because we're using electromagnetic waves to try to communicate to put up the internet for example we use electromagnetic waves for communications so all of our technology the internet of things uh, the GPS is in our cars they all dependent on this technology which is built on electromagnetic waves so when the solar when the solar storms impact uh, or come up in the in the especially the major ones, then the disruption is found, and you might actually lose the signal. It's similar as well with the electricity uh, in, in terms of the, the disruptions there that you might find that you lose electricity because the electromagnetic waves have, uh, have disrupted the communications lines, if you will. And you were speaking about the collaboration uh, with other agencies across the continent and also across the world. Um, a few of those representatives here today, um, uh, what, what form does that collaboration take? 
Oh, it's, it's, it's a number of ways. Uh, so if we look, for example, with what we do with the UK Space Academy, which, which is here today, one of the most important parts on space is actually outreach and raising awareness. It's particular so with the, young, with, the young, with the youngsters, because we want more and more people to actually come into this field so that it's not seen only to be for prestigious uh, uh, careers that one comes when we work, we work in space. So with the UK Space Academy, we do out, outreach activities uh, with, uh, with them. Um, if you look at uh, the NASA, for example, who's also here, the research aspect that we have, because it's a global phenomenon, uh, space, uh, and space weather even more so. So you need to make sure that the models that we're using in South Africa adhere to the international standard. Some of the questions and the answers that we find are also useful for our international partners uh, as, as, as well. With the African partners, uh, we to calibrate the information we're getting from space, we need to put our infrastructure on the ground. And so we partner with them in making sure that our infrastructure on the ground is secure, but also to have research capability on both sides. Because when you make data accessible to researchers, it empowers not only the researchers, but the nation as well. And with that, we're hoping that we build a network of space science researchers throughout the continent. And to you, Samlisa, thank you very much for speaking to me, of course, uh, the acting CEO of SANS, just explaining to us um, about uh, the importance of uh, space weather monitoring, and then also speaking on this day, uh, where a number of uh, delegates from across, the, uh, well, delegates or invitees from across the continent, um, and indeed across the world, are here in Amanis, uh, in the Western Cape, in celebration of the opening, the launch of this 24-7 uh, high-tech uh, facility, multi-million rand facility uh, being launched here uh, in the Western Cape today.